Hey guys, Professor E here with Professor E's Guide to Annotating. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you'll find it informative and helpful in ensuring that you guys get full marks for all of your annotations plus assignments this semester. So first things first, uh, we are going to be annotating some really cool books. The Complete Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi and The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Spiegelman really changed the game for graphic novels. Um, he won the Pulitzer for The Complete Mouse, Wolf or Mouse One, and he inspired people like Satrapi to tell these difficult stories in a visual storytelling medium. Uh, which, of course, in my opinion, makes it more impactful, but also allows you to engage in a different kind of critical thinking. So that's the purpose of the Annotations Plus assignments, is to allow you to take the experience of reading and make it into active reading and to help you become better critical thinkers, critical readers, and, of course, critical writers. So I'm going to be going over the post-it note method of annotating for our class and um, hopefully this will add to what you guys already do as readers. Hopefully you already know a little bit about annotating and have been annotating on your own. Hopefully you did it for the writer's notebook pre-quiz, but hopefully you've been doing it all along. So whenever you read something for a class for learning, uh, hopefully what you'll do is take this forward and become a uh, natural annotator, a natural critical thinker, a natural active reader. So let's talk about what your tools are for this task. Uh, first and foremost, I always go through and read with highlighters in hand. I like to go and find different places in the book that uh, just catch my eye, catch my attention, and um, mark it with a highlighter. Um, blue and green are my favorite colors. So when I see like highlighted text on a page or these uh, speech bubbles or anything like that, that just lets me know that I probably noticed that on the first read through. And then um, I'll go through a second time around and use post-it notes, either the small ones or the large ones. I find work pretty well for me, but you can use any color, any size post-it note. These smaller ones seem to be the most useful for the graphic novel type because since those are panels and they're pretty small, um, you'll notice if you use the larger ones, excuse me, <clears throat> like I want to cough, but I'm not coughing. Uh, the smaller ones are not as obtrusive on the page. And if you tend to use larger post-it notes, then obviously that covers up a little bit more, um, but that's okay. Either way, you know, whatever works for you. I also like to use the post-it tabs. Uh, you can either purchase them, so these like pointy ones with the little arrow were purchased, and then these other ones I made from cutting up small post-it notes um, that allows me to write on them as well. And then you'll notice that on my books, I have the post-it tabs just from the small ones which allow me to write some things on that um, if I want to have additional comments and so on as well, as well as helping me mark the chapters and the reading assignments and so forth. Um, I also recommend having a pen and a pencil in hand. I hardly ever use pens anymore when I'm annotating, only to write on the post-it notes themselves. Um, but I was taught to annotate with the pencil method which means that I would write in the margins different comments and things like that um, or use icons or things. And then of course the last tool you'll need is a composition notebook or a notebook that you can use to do your plus responses. You're going to actually be writing uh, your responses to the plus questions which are um, listed in the guidelines one through four. So we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, this is basically the wrap up at the end once you're done doing your annotating and your reading. All right, so let's get into the meat of this assignment. So annotating basically is just taking notes as you read, highlighting, underlining, uh, writing comments, all that kind of stuff. Now, again, 
I recommend that when you read through, you, uh, you know, just mark whatever catches your eye. Uh, I write in the margins a little bit here, but as I've gone through my time at COD and given this assignment from these texts multiple times, I do allow you to use uh, used textbooks and so forth. I find that doing highlighting and stuff like that, the traditional type of annotating, doesn't really work that well. Uh, it starts to get pretty marked up on the page. So I recommend that you stick to the post-it note method. Um, I also ask that you have um, your um, pages circled and that you put them into the annotations plus at the end, the questions. That way I can distinguish what you are annotating versus what a student in the past annotated, uh, maybe the original owner of the text. If you have a brand new textbook, I still recommend that you use the post-it notes because they will keep your book clean. And one of the best things about the post-it note method is you can go back to a post-it and see what you wrote. And if your thinking has changed or you want to add something to that, you can just go ahead and you know write it down on the post-it note and stick it on the page there as well. Um, one of the things that I did when I was in graduate school was focus on the things that I was doing specifically for my dissertation. And now that I'm doing these things, uh, reading some books as a teacher, I have a completely different point of view. So it's kind of fun to compare and contrast, you know, old me versus new me or something like that. And hopefully you'll get a chance to experience that as well. Of course, if you don't plan on keeping your book, then it's just the easiest thing in the world is to go through the book, yank out the post-its, and then, you know, sell it or uh, return it to the rental place, whatever it is that you're doing. So it's uh, easier to keep your book in pristine condition that well. Um, I also recommend that you use icons when you are annotating. And I have a, a little chart of my icons here. You're welcome to use these or you can create your own. Um, I find that these are simple, but they're effective. They pretty much cover everything that I might note in a uh, comment. Um, I also have added to this list CCs and PCs, um, which will make more sense in just a moment when I talk about the annotations plus part. Alrighty, so it's really cool to um, kind of see what students think about the reading and what they notice versus what I think is important and what I notice. So that's one of the reasons that I think uh, annotating is something that as a skill moving forward, a lot of students take that into any class, whether it's reading based or not. I've seen students do this with math textbooks, with science textbooks, history textbooks, and that of course is a, is a really useful tool. Um, all right, so what is annotating? Um, so again, it's basically just taking notes, but for the annotations plus assignments, the specifics are based on our unique texts. So in um, our class, we're going to be reading a lot of pages. Um, however long the page range is, though, you want to make sure that you annotate throughout the page range of the reading assignment. So if it's pages, you know, 1 through 50, you're going to want some on page 1, some on page 2, 3, 4, five, you know, just keep on going all the way through till you get to the end of the reading assignment. Um, what I'm looking for is at least one post-it note on the page and that you circle the page number at the bottom. So um, this is not a good example because it's one of the pages that I use for discussion board, but here's one. So I have several post-its on this page um, and that's the reason that I would quote unquote turn it in for grading but uh, notice that there's several different post-its on several different panels and then I circle the page at the bottom so you want to make sure that I can see the page number at the bottom of the page when you turn that in. What you're going to do is you're going to go through um, as I say in number one under the plus questions guidelines so you're going to list at least 20 pages of the fully annotated non-sequential pages from the reading range, which means that I want to see the um, full range that is not only completely read by you, but also that you were doing active reading throughout, that you were actually annotating as you were going through. 
Um, again, you know, you're going to probably maybe do some highlighting or something when you read through the first time. But then the most important thing is you want to make sure that you have those post-its on those pages. So the pages you're turning in for grading are always going to have at least one post-it and um, they're going to be circled. So you're going to choose from those like 75, 80 pages, the best 25 that, I mean, the best 20 that represent your engagement with the reading, right? Um, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to share a, a universal theme. The universal theme is basically a big idea, uh, love versus hate, uh, man versus nature, uh, the little guy versus the machine, um, anything like that. Just, I want you to think about these sort of binary kind of relationships or that two sides to the same coin kind of concept that the book kind of deals with. Now, you're reading lots of different chapters, so you want to think what is the overall, the predominant theme that you get from that reading selection. Um, for example, if one chapter really focuses on uh, male-female relationships and another focuses more on uh, familiar relationships, then you can kind of combine those and say, you know, interpersonal relationships or um, father versus son or um, whatever it is that you think is sort of the predominant one. There's no real wrong answer you can give here, uh, but I do want you to focus on that blank versus blank format, the universal theme format. Uh, for number three, you're going to make connections. Those are critical connections, i.e. critical thinking connections. So you're showing me that you can connect something in the book, something from what you just read, to something outside the book. So uh, here's an example of just one post-it on a page, but also the circle there, because the idea is a good idea. So you might want to think, okay, this reminds me of um, critical thinking, of uh, uh, an incident that happened in the news. So you will mention this you know, page or this character's situation reminds me of what just happened in the news, in this news story. And then you're going to specifically refer to it. With the critical thinking connection, if you can give me a link, uh, a URL, you know, an article or uh, a, a movie trailer or something like that, that would be the best. I had one student one semester, um, for some reason, everything connected to something with Disney. And uh, he was always choosing Pixar movies, and he's like, you know, this incident between uh, the father-son reminds me of uh, the movie Up and how um, Russell, you know, doesn't have a relationship with his father, but Mr. F uh, Friedrichsen, I don't know, Carl, is that stand-in father, and so it represents, you know, that effort to retrieve that. You know, this other incident reminds me of uh, how Margie... Uh, rebels, and that reminds me of uh, Merida from Brave. I mean, whatever connection you make is fine. There's no wrong answer. I'm not looking for something specifically academic, in other words. I just want you to let me know how your thinking works. So if you are like a Pixar nerd or a Disney nerd or a Star Wars nerd, this is my son's room, by the way, uh, like me, then it might end up always going back to that. It doesn't matter. You don't have to like always choose something literary or always choose something that you think is highbrow. It's just a connection, a critical connection. That makes that connection inside your brain. That makes that uh, critical thinking connection inside your brain. And then you want to have a personal connection. So this is a first-hand experience or something that you've observed in someone close to you. So you can say, you know, hopefully you haven't suffered through war or have survivor's guilt about something. But if you do, you can definitely talk about that. Um, it would be something more like, you know, using I or me, uh, relating an anecdote. So you would say, you know, this relationship reminds me of the relationship that I have with my father and how, you know, we never really saw eye to eye. Or this reminds me of, um, you know, something that happened at work and how I had to learn how to deal with someone difficult and then you kind of go into a little bit of detail. Usually what I want you to do is to show me that it's a real connection. And again, you can do that, you know, on your post-its themselves, like write it down here and then put that into your annotations plus at the end. Um, whatever it is you decide to do, you want to make sure you have both a personal and a critical connection. And as I say, don't forget to name names. The better 
it, uh, the more specific, the better. So don't be like, oh, this reminds me of how people nowadays don't connect to one another because of social media. Say, you know, this reminds me of how I have had difficulty connecting with my friends because I tend to put everything on Instagram instead of, you know, going over to their house and sharing my uh, experiences with them in person or something like that. I want you to be specific, right? So like my friend Betty and I don't go and talk about stuff anymore. We just like each other's pages or like each other's pics or whatever. And then finally, you're going to have a little free write response. Uh, if you've ever done journaling as a reader, reader's journals or anything, it's kind of like that, just a little bit shorter version. Um, I want you to share your concluding thoughts or your overall impressions of the reading. You can feel free to be honest. There's no um, requirement for you to like the reading. You can talk about how much you hate it or what you don't like or what you do like or something you got from it or questions that you have. Or you can just elaborate more on connections that you made, anything at all. The main thing is I want it to be a minimum of three to five sentences. So just jot down like a longish paragraph when you're doing that. What that looks like will be, you're going to, again, for our class since we're online, you're going to take pictures of your annotated pages. So you're going to choose 20 non-sequential pages. Uh, if they are sequential, if you turn in pages, for example, 6 and 7, and you know 10 and 11 and 13 and 14 those will count those two pages will count as one or three or four pages will count as one so every series every sequential series counts as one point remember it has to be 20 points 20 pages annotated for the full credit and of course we're doing a lot of reading so it's not going to have trouble meeting those 20 pages and it has to be from the full range so if you only give me pages from the first half of the reading if the assignment is pages 1 through 60 and you only give me pages 1 through 30 or 1 through 20 then you are going to lose points because I don't know that you've read through page 60 unless you show me with your annotated pages so you're going to take pictures with your phone or you can take a video and uh, just you know show it like really close and turn the pages slowly make sure I see the page numbers and so on and so forth I'm bad at that kind of thing. Usually you can you know, do it down better with a phone. Then you're going to insert those images into a Word or PowerPoint or PDF, or you're going to upload the video either to YouTube or directly to our Canvas class site. And then you're going to have your plus responses. So in your notebook, you're going to have the annotation number. You're going to list the 20 pages. I just made up those pages, by the way. Um, you're going to have the universal theme, kind of give your rationale. So I chose love versus hate for that, you know, that binary concept. Uh, for the connections, I put a personal connection and a critical connection. I tried to be specific, referring to my father, referring to a film, uh, Magnolia, one of my favorite movies, by the way, starring Tom Cruise. And then I did my free write response. So um, I actually do count the sentences to make sure you have three to five sentences. But I'm looking for about a half a page, page uh, max. Again, a longish paragraph. Just your free response. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking at grammar. I'm not looking at spelling. I'm not looking at MLA formatting. It's just your thoughts about your reading, your kind of reader's journal, if you will. So that's going to be what you submit for the annotations plus assignments. Um, for each unit, you'll have at least two annotation assignments to do. So you want to make sure you cram all those pages into there, spread it out, and then have your plus responses. The annotated pages, those 20 pages from the book, are worth 20 points. The plus responses, those four questions that are answered, um, one, two, three, and four, are worth five points. Each of them is worth one point and then number four is worth two points because it's longer and that's for a total of 25 points for these assignments. Um, I hope you enjoy the reading. Um, personally, both Persepolis and The Complete Mouse blew me away the first time I read them and every time I read them I just get more and more out of them. Right now, of course, The Complete Persepolis is a lot on my mind considering what's going on uh, in Iran, Iraq at this moment. And that's what this book kind of covers. Um, but it's always something relevant, something you can find. So 
um, hopefully you can find that connection to yourself and to the outside world and that will help to reinforce that critical thinking element. Um, again, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. Feel free to research, you know, annotating and annotations um, guidelines on anywhere in the web and the uh, whatever you find helpful. And then, of course, remember, you want to make sure that you keep up with the reading, don't get behind, um, get the maximum experience out of the learning. That's really going to be the hard work is on you in doing the reading and doing the annotations. Um, but it doesn't mean that it can't be fun. So happy reading, everyone. Have a great evening.